Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to talk about uh, some special angles which trigonometry likes to deal with. Um, why are they special? Well, because they are easy to deal with. Now, you know, for instance, uh, from the geometry, such a great quality of the right triangle with a 30 degree acute angle and 60 degree another, that this particular catheter is equal to half of the hypotenuse, for instance, which is very easy to prove just with another triangle like that. That would be also 30. So it's 60 together, and this is 60 as well. So this is equilateral triangle, and since this is half uh, of, of this side, so it's half of this side. So these uh, properties are basically making triangles, which is this one, like 30, 60, and also 45, 45, right triangle, special in a way that it's easy to deal with these. In trigonometry, we are talking about ratios between catheters and hypotenuse, or one catheter and another catheter. And since everything is so easily related to each other, the values of trigonometric functions of these basic angles, like 30, 45, and 60, are very easy to calculate and deal with. So, uh, considering we are dealing with um, angles not only within this range from 0 to 90 for um, right triangles, but for uh, an entire range, an entire cycle of 360 degrees, or 2 pi in radians, um, there are some other angles which are also special. In the same sense, it's easy to calculate the values of all trigonometric functions. And that's what I'm going to talk to, uh, about uh, in this lecture. So, let's go back to original definition of the trigonometric functions as um, ordinates and abscisses of different points uh, on the unit circle uh, or the ratio among them. So, we will devote our attention first to the first quadrant. And the three important angles are uh, 30 degrees, Forty-five degrees and sixty degrees. Now, I will also talk about zero degree when the point A actually is coinciding with the uh, direction of x-axis, and ninety degree when the point is coinciding with the direction of the y-axis. So, um, and then from these. Uh, uh, degree from the, from these uh, angles and their degrees and their and the coordinates of the of the point A, we will derive all other everywhere. Um, what I would like actually to say before that, that the same picture which is on the uh, in the first quadrant, it, it it should actually be exactly transformed into every other quadrant. So you have this is one-third, basically. 30 is one-third of 90, uh, 45 is half of the 90 degree, and 60 is two-thirds, right? So the same three angles would be here. Now, but since we are measuring the angle from the positive direction of the x-axis counterclockwise, so there is uh, another measure, obviously, it's not 30 degrees, it's uh, 120 degrees, this is 135, etc. I'm not going to write it right now, but you have to understand that each quadrant has exactly the same arrangement. The same three vectors are pointing to three points. which constitute these major angles, 
one is in the middle and the other two are catching one third. So together with the top and left and right and top and bottom points, they constitute how many different special angles? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So we have 16 special points. Now, each angle, which is characterized by a point, and angle again is calculated from here counterclockwise as a positive angle or uh, clockwise as a negative angle. Now, for each of these angles, there are six values of different trigonometric functions like sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, secant, and, and cosecant. So 16 different points time, times six different functions, you have, what, 96 different values which you might be asked to remember. Obviously, nobody remembers it. What's, what, what's important is to understand the system, how they are formed, and that's what we are going to talk about, and basically derive whenever you need any value of any angle using this system. Basically, my personal um, recommendation is, all you have to remember is that 30 degree is characterized by a vector of uh, opposite cajetus of one half of the hypotenuse. Everything else can be derived. And for 45 degrees, you also can derive everything, because you know that uh, the 45 degrees right triangle has the same cajetus, the, the same cajetus, uh since they are equal to each other. This is 45 degrees and this is 45 degrees. So everything is derived using Pythagorean theorem and some uh, symmetry properties which we are talking about. All right, so don't memorize anything. Again, the only thing you might actually have to memorize and it's kind of almost automatic that the 30 degree triangle, uh, right triangle, has a, an opposite cajetus equal to half of the hypotenuse. Everything else is deri derivable. All right, so now we are ready to approach our problem. And let's talk about the first quadrant only. So we have 30, 45, and 60 degrees. Um, now, as I was already saying, we can derive everything, but what you really need is coordinates of this point. Now, why? why? Because, well, obviously, because, for instance, uh, sine of this is an ordinate. Cosine of this is an abscissa of this angle, of this triangle, of this point, actually. And uh, the, the tangent is ratio between uh, ordinate and abscissa. Cotangent is the reverse, abscissa over uh, ordinate. Uh, second is 1 over uh, cosine, which is 1 over abscissa, and, cosec uh, and cosecant is 1 over sine, which is 1 over ordinate. So if you know basically one, one particular segment and you know it, it's one half of the hypotenuse. Uh, everything else is basically derived from the, from the definition. So let's stop about, let's talk about um, these angles. So coordinates of point A. Now, since you know that the radius is always one, and I was already talking about the uh, opposite catheters to a hypotenuse in case of 30 degrees, um, equal to uh, half of the hypotenuse, so we know that ordinate is equal to one half. Now, what is another catheter which is abscissa uh, of the point A? Well, we know the theorem, the Pythagorean theorem, right? The square of the hypotenuse, one square, is equal to square of this, let's call it x square, plus square of this, and you know what this is. Well, let's just solve it. I mean, it's no big deal. It's 1 equals to x squared plus 1 quarter. From this, x squared equals to 3 quarters. And x is equal to 
the square root of 3 over 2. So that's the coordinates of the point A when it, res it, when it represents the angle of 30 degrees. Now, let's move on. 45 degrees. I will not use the letter A anymore. I'll just use the coordinates. Now, if this is the 45 degrees, so you know that this is uh, the right triangle. This is 45 and this is 45, obviously. So the catheters, one catheters is equal to another catheters, right? So if this is x, so it's x squared plus x squared equals to 1 squared, right? Because the hypotenuse is equal to 1. That's the radius. Well, from this, 2x squared equals to 1. x squared is equal to 1 half. x is equal 1 over square root of 2, which is the same as square root of 2 divided by 2. I just multiplied by square root of 2 both. And as you understand, I'm not really losing any roots of this equation um, because x represents the length, which is positive. So that's why I'm taking only the positive value. So in this particular case, both abscissa and ordinate are equal to square root of 2 over 2. Finally, we have a 60 degrees. But now 60 degrees is easy, because if this angle is 60 degrees, then the opposite angle is 30 degrees, right? These are right triangles. If one angle is 60 and another is acute angle, it's 30. So this catheter is, is, is equal to half of the hypotenuse, which is one half. So we have basically the same triangle as in this particular case. They're just positioned differently, but it's the same. Other catheters can be calculated using exactly the same calculation as before. So in this particular case, our abscissa is equal to one half, and that's why the ordinate we have already found using these application, using these equations and Pythagorean theorem basically is equal to square root of 3 divided by 2. Now, in this case, when the uh, angle is equal to 0, well, the coordinate of this point is abscissa is equal to radius, which is 1, and the ordinate is equal to 0, obviously. And the opposite side, uh, not opposite, but 90 degree side, that's uh, when abscissa is equal to 0 and the ordinate is equal to the radius, which is 1. So we have basically covered all the points in the first quadrant, all the uh, special angles or basic angles. Now, we found their coordinates, the coordinates of the points which represent these angles. Now, how can I find any trigonometric function? Well, what's the definition? The definition of sine is ordinate, right? So. The sine of 0 is 0, sine of 30 is 1 half, sine of 45 is square root of 2 over 2, and sine of 60 is square root of 3 over 2, and sine of 90 is 1. Now, the cosine, cosine is abscissa. So for 0, it's 1. For 30 degrees, is square root of 3 over 2. For 45 degrees, is square root of 2 over 2. For 60 degrees, abscissa is 1 half, the cosine. And for 90 degree, uh, cosine is 0. What else? Uh, let's say we want um, cosecant. Cosecant is 1 over sine. Sine is ordinate. So for this, the denominator is equal to 0, so it's not defined. For this, it's 2 over 1, right? So it's 2. For 45 degrees, it's 2 divided by square root of 2, which is square root of 2. For 60 degrees, it's 2 divided by square root of 3. Or you can change it. It would be 2 divided by square root of 3. The same thing as 2 square root of 3 divided by 3, right? Uh, it's uh, customary to have radicals on, on the 
on the top in the numerator side. So I multiply by square root of 3 both sides. So in any case, any trigonometric functions, a function can be derived from these. So I'm not going to remember anything. I'm not going to memorize anything. The only thing which I really have to memorize is Pythagorean theorem and one particular property about one half for 30 degrees. Everything else is derivable. And that's how I suggest you to, to, to basically um, approach these particular things. Don't memorize anything except the way how you can derive the, the, the whatever is necessary. Well, obviously, you have to memorize the definition of the cosecant that this is 1 over uh, sine, or tangent is sine over cosine, etc. By the way, tangent, tangent of 45 degrees, for instance, it's sine over cosine. Sine is ordinate, cosine is abscissa, so it's square root of 2 divided by square root of 2, it's 1. Well, tangent of 45 degrees is 1. That's it. All right, fine. Now we have to move to other quadrants, and before doing that, I would like to, uh, uh, to prove a very, very small theorem, which will be very handy. It's about symmetry. You see, these things are symmetrical. These three are symmetrical to these three relative to vertical axis. Now, these three are symmetrical to these three, or these are symmetrical to these three relative to horizontal axis. So I will use this symmetry to derive the values of these guys. How? Very simple. Let's consider you have a circle. You have a diameter. And you have, let's say it's S, G. And, that's, and, and you have two points, P and Q, such that these two angles are acute and congruent to each other, which basically means that angles are symmetrical relative to the diameter. Then my point is that P and Q are symmetrical as well. Now, what does it mean that they are symmetrical? When are the two points symmetrical to each other relative to a line? When they are on the common perpendicular and on the same distance from, from the uh, intersection of this perpendicular with the line, right? So we have to have, we have to, to, to prove that P and Q are on the same perpendicular and on the same distance from the diameter. All right, let's prove. Let's uh, drop perpendiculars from P and from Q. Well, I'm not sure how visible it is, but I deliberately left a little distance between them. Um, because in theory they might not coincide, right? If they coincide, these two perpendiculars, then I know they are on the same perpendicular. That is the same one line. But maybe they're not. I don't know, right? So let's define the point I and the point J as the points where perpendiculars are falling to ST. Now, consider since these are perpendiculars, these two triangles, OPI and OQJ, are right triangles, right? Now, OP and OQ are radiuses, so they are equal. They are hypotenuses for, this, for these triangles. And angles we know, acute angles we know by the, by, by, by the condition of the theorem, that they are um, uh, congruent. Now, obviously, the uh, right triangles are congruent by hypotenuse and an acute angle. So if they are congruent, that means that OI equals to OJ. So I and J are on the same distance from O, which means they coincide. It's the same point, actually. Also, it means that PI and QJ are also the same lengths, which means not only P and Q are on the same perpendicular, but also are on the same distance from the base of these perpendiculars, which proves that they are symmetrical. Now, it's quite obvious theorem, and to prove it was just, you know, basically use one, um, uh, one, one particular theorem about uh, uh, congruence of right triangles. It was it basically a trivial theorem. And also, not only it's trivial to prove, 
you actually see that this is the right thing. I mean, if angles are symmetrical, and this is a circle, this is a diameter, the diameter is also kind of symmetrical, everything is symmetrical, so P and Q must be symmetrical. That's important, okay? So we have proven this theory, that if angles around the diameter um, are symmetrical, then the points of intersection of these angles with the circle are symmetrical as well. Now let's take a look at this. What is this angle? That's one third again. It's uh, from the 90 degree we just took only 30. So this is 90 plus 30, it's 120. So we're talking about this point which is 120 degree. It represents the angle of 120 degree. But now consider this point and this point, which is 60 degree. Now, this point is 120, which is 90 plus 30. This is 60, which is 90 minus 30. So this is also 30. So angles are symmetrical. Well, if angles are symmetrical, then the points are symmetrical. They are symmetrical relatively to the y-axis. Now, if points are symmetrical relative to the y-axis, it means they project onto the same ordinate. So ordinate is the same. Now, since they are symmetrical, then this distance is equal to this distance, and these are abscissas. But they are on different sides. So if this point has coordinate uv, then this point should have coordinate minus uv. Because abscissa is negative, and this abscissa is positive, but they are equal in absolute value. But the ordinate is the same, so v and v. From this, we immediately get the coordinate of this, minus 1 half square root of 3 over 2. I just took this and used this principle of symmetry, and I've got this. How about this guy? This is 45 here, and this is 135, which is 90 plus 45, and relative to 90 minus 45, which is 45, right? So these points are symmetrical, which means this is minus square root of 2 over 2, and square root of 2 over 2. And the third point is, this is 90 plus 60, which is 150 degree. 150 degree. And it's symmetrical to this one, to 30, because this is 90 plus 60, this is 90 minus 60. These angles are symmetrical, so the points are symmetrical, which means we have minus square root of 3 over 2, comma 1, 2. Easy. So everything is symmetrical. Now, these guys are also symmetrical. So this is uh, 180. And by the way, in this particular case, if the point is here, uh, it's 180, so coordinates are minus 1, 0, right? Minus 1 is abscissa, and 0 is ordinate. Now, but this is 180 plus 30, which is 2. 210 degrees. This is 180 plus 45, which is what? 225? And this is plus uh, 60, which is 240. All right. Now, they are symmetrical relatively to the x-axis, the diameter, right? So whatever angle goes here or angle goes there, if angles are the same, then points are symmetrical relatively to this. So the 210 point is symmetrical to 150. This is 180 minus 30. This is 180 plus 30. Well, if points are symmetrical relatively to the x-axis, then Their abscissas are the same. They are projecting 
to the same point. That's abscissa. But the ordinate, which is projection to this, they are equal in the magnitude, in absolute value, but opposite in sign. So we will have this. Which is immediately following that this is equal to minus 1 uh, uh, square root of 3 over 2, comma, minus 1 half. Now this, 225, is symmetrical to this. This is 180 plus 45, this is 180 minus 45, which is 135. And therefore, I will have the square root of 2 minus, divided by 2 with a minus sign, and another is minus sign. 240 is symmetrical to this. This is 180 plus 60, 180 minus 60 is 120. So here we have minus 1 half minus square root of 3 over 2. Finally, if point is here, that's 270 degrees. The coordinate of this point is abscissa is 0, ordinate is minus 1. Next, uh, we can actually compare these guys. So this is 30 degrees, so this is 300, right? So this is 300. This is 270 plus 45, which is 315. And this is 3, 330, all right? Now, 300 is 360, which is the whole uh, circle, minus 60. And it's symmetrical to 60, right? This is 60 degree, and this is 60 degree. 0 and 360 is exactly the same thing. So it's 0 plus 360, or 360 minus 60. It's exactly the same. All right, so this is symmetry relatively to the x-axis, which means, again, we are changing the ordinate. So for 300, we get... For 300 degrees, we have um, 1 half minus square root of 3 over 2. For 315, we get this, which is square root of 2 over 2 minus square root of 2 over 2. And for 330, we have square root of 3 over 2 minus comma minus 1. So we have coordinates of every special point on our circle, which represents every special angle. Now, by the way, it's the same to say 330 or to say minus 30. It's exactly the same point, right? So the sine or cosine or anything else and the coordinates will be exactly the same. So it doesn't really matter whether I'm using this notation or minus 30, minus 45, minus 60, minus 90, etc. It doesn't matter. So in any case, we have coordinates of all special points, and if we have coordinates, we can construct from this any function. So again, let me repeat it from the beginning. What I am suggesting is to remember only this one half. Everything else is very easily derived using symmetry. You just have to always imagine yourself this unit circle and the theorem that whenever you are symmetrical relatively to some diameter, then your points will be symmetrical as well. And now, symmetry relatively to the y-axis means that your ordinate is the same and abscissa are different in, si in sign but the same in absolute value. If you are symmetrical relatively to the x-axis, then your um, abscissa is the same but ordinate is uh, opposite in signs and the same in uh, absolute value. So from these numbers, as I have written it here, which you do not have to memorize, you can derive the value of any function as long as you know the definition of the function. Sine is ordinate, cosine is abscissa, tangent is ordinate divided by abscissa, cotangent is abscissa divided by ordinate, 
uh, what else? Secant is 1 over cosine, which is 1 over uh, abscissa. And cosecant is 1 over sine, which is 1 over this. That's it. Um, I have covered all these uh, uh, special values. And I will use these special values to basically present different problems related to each and every function. Now, when I will talk about functions, uh, I will present certain calculation problems, like calculate the value of uh, sine of 150 degrees. And you have to really, you know, based on, on this, imagine what is 150 degrees. Aha, 150 is 180 minus 30. So it's symmetrical to this. Or 150 is symmetrical to uh, 90 minus uh, 60, right? Which is basically 30. So there is a symmetry, so you have to find which symmetry it's symmetrical to, which symmetry to use, and then correspondingly change the value of whatever the basic value, uh, which are actually three values, one half square root of 2 over 2 and square root of 3 over 2. Everything else is, again, derivable. Um, and that's how you can get the value of uh, coordinate of the 150 degree point. And from the coordinate, you can find out everything, all the functions, by manipulating the abscissa and ordinate. OK, that's it for today. Thank you very much. And uh, try to um, mentally go through this circle again just by yourself to basically uh, feel this symmetry and feel that you don't really have to remember everything. You have to remember basically some very, very a uh, few items uh, of the information and everything else can be derived. Thanks very much. Good luck.